Welcome to Stand Out, Get Noticed, where graphic designers, marketers, sales managers and business owners discover hints, tips and techniques to improve their marketing and sales communications. Today's topic explores the power of standout business proposals. Every day in Australia, the UK and the USA, over 20 million people, that's business owners, sales reps, bid managers, etc., produce over 20 million business to business or business or B2B proposals. The vast majority, or approximately 90% of which, will fail. I believe that with the right mindset and some basic training, most proposal managers can easily double or triple their success rates. Hi, my name is Ian Bosler, but many of my customers call me the bid boss. With 25 years corporate bid management experience in Australia, New Zealand, Europe and the USA, I've won proposals worth over many billions of dollars, but I've also lost at least three to four times that value. Over the last 10 years, I've been providing proposal document production services for B2B businesses of all sizes. Each year at Intertype, we support over 500 tenders valued from 10 million to many billions and over 10,000 proposals valued from $2,000. Over the past 35 years though, has much changed? Well, from where I sit, not much. Proposal writing is only seen as a necessary evil in most businesses. Very little attention is paid to the visual appeal of the proposal. The focus is still on compliance and price, very much the tick the box approach. There's a lack of enterprise wide store value story integration. There's a near universal lack of process. There's also a lack of recognition of the value created by proposals. This is evidenced by the universal absence of the chief proposal officer or CPO role. There are three simple steps your organisation can take that will significantly improve your bidding or proposal success across all opportunities, from simple quotes right through to major tenders. The first step is to do, to do is to resign from your industry. Industries are like an amorphous mass of sameness. All businesses in an industry tend to look exactly the same. When this happens, it's very hard to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Occasionally, a black sheep will appear within your industry, often trying to stand out for being the lowest price supplier. Eventually, these black sheep lose their distinction and blend back into the herd. Resign from your industry and truly differentiate yourself and you can become the lone sheep from the entire in the entire paddock or market to yourself. This makes business much more fun. For example, you could be just another player in the building industry, or you could actually own the residential lifestyle industry. Apple is a great example of a business that's achieved this many times over. They resigned from the personal computing industry many, many years ago. They also redefined the mobile phone industry. They then went on to redefine the retail industry with the likes of iTunes, as well as the retailing of hardware, computers, etc. And now they're redefining the wrist watch industry. One of the key issues that you have as a member of an industry is that you're seen for what you do, not why you do it. For example, if you're in the printing industry, you're seen by the market as just another printer. You print things. The market will never see you for why you do what you do. And so miss being able to truly connect with the prospects and customers at the powerful emotional level. There are some great resources I would recommend for you. The first is The Blue Ocean Strategy, a book written by two Harvard professors. Now it's not a textbook, but rather a very easy read with great frameworks on how to go about becoming an industry of one and to move away from your competitive environments. It includes great studies such as Nintendo, Yellow Tail Wines and the City of New York. The second resource is about getting in touch with your why. The why guru was Simon Sinek. Perform a simple YouTube search for Simon Sinek TED Talk to access a short video on how powerful getting in touch with your why can be for your business. The second step is when you need to think about your proposals as part of a process. Proposals are an activity that fall within a marketing and sales process. 
A marketing and sales process goes through a number of steps, including attracting traffic, capturing leads, nurturing prospects, converting them into a sale, which is really where the proposal stage resides, delivering and satisfying, upselling to customers, and then finally getting referrals. Great proposals contain a summary of the complete value story as it relates to the opportunity at hand. The problem is, snippets of your value story are told in every stage of the marketing and sales process. You start to build the story through the attract, capture, nurture processes. You crystallize that story in your proposal and you further crystallize that value story in the delivery phase. It's only when the actual delivery matches the value story within your proposal that repeat business and referrals start to flow. When you look at the marketing and sales process, we often see they are treated as separate and discrete activities and managed under silos such as marketing, sales and customer service. Within a B2B environment, the proposal is the singularly most important tool. It's where your brand or value story actually meets the market in order to drive revenue. To me, it makes sense that the entire marketing and sales process should be managed by a CPO or Chief Proposal Officer. This will ensure value story alignment, which will deliver the greatest return on investment. Step three. The final step is to look at it as a numbers game. The traditional proposal numbers game was to get as many proposals out there. In other words, double the volume of proposals you send out and you'll automatically double your sales volume. This is the wrong number to focus on. When managing numbers with our clients, we like to look to measure five key variables. Firstly, we measure traffic, whether it's to your website or opportunities you're invited to bid on. Next, we look at the number of proposals that flow from the traffic, followed by the value of those proposals. Then we look at the number of wins and then the value of those wins. By presenting these numbers in a dashboard, you have an easy to use management tool. A well-constructed dashboard captures all the key variables, displays trends and provides management insight to improvement opportunities. Now for a case study. This is about a small printing business. Four years ago, it was part of the printing industry. It looked like a printer. It smelled like a printer. It walked like a printer. It was a printer clearly in the printing industry had a very modest sales of $450,000 a year. The average order value was $80, which was the industry average for digital printers of this size. Its win ratio was 15%, which was slightly higher than the printing industry. The growth rate again mirrored the printing industry in that it was declining slowly at about minus 5%. Their prices were mid-market and they were getting a lot of price pressure. They communicated price not by proposals, but by quotes, again mirroring the industry norm. A typical print quote contains a list of jargon, then a price. This style of quoting forces the prospects to compare on price, as there's no value story. Price is the only form of differentiation. Fast forward four years. They resign from the printing industry, yet the print, they print more than they have ever did before. The sales have gone up to one and a half million dollars a year. Very nice for this size of business. They didn't increase their headcount and they didn't invest in any additional equipment. The average order value has gone from $80 to over $1,900 per order. Their average win rate is now at 62%. After the initial burst of growth, they're now settled into a growth rate of 13% per annum. Their prices are now in the high market, which is about 10% above the mid-market range. They've eliminated quotes from their business and only deliver proposals. It's a clear demonstration of the power of proposals. Now those three steps again. Firstly, resign from your industry and get in touch with your why. Secondly, it's all about the process. And thirdly, it's a numbers game. If you want to, learn, want to learn more, visit us at intertype.com.au. That's spelled I-N-T-E-R-T-Y-P-E. -E, or text just your first name and email address to 0407 058 
709 to receive free resources, checklists and guides to help you improve your proposal success rates.